Good luck. Alright, recently I've been playing Third Falric quite a bit. Uh, yeah, so we both wish each other good luck here. Um, so, in an effort to not mess things up, I'm just going to close this diagonal in advance of something crazy happening. Um, and we will play this... Even though normally I've played fourth file rook, I think here it's okay for me to play this way. Certainly there's no large detriment to this. We'll just play a nice calm game, nice calm opening. Um, with this silver already raised, should I be concerned? Should I start attacking over here right away in anticipation that they're going to strike my bishop's head? Uh, hmm. I wonder. One, two, three, four, five to hit this. One, two, three, four. Yeah, okay. So there's, there's no shame in this move. Where the shame comes is that eventually when they do strike, um, like once I've lifted this silver up, it's not so clear that I can continue pursuing an attack right away. Um, Alright, I should calm down a little bit. Likewise, I'm probably not committing to building Anaguma at this time. Interesting. They've built Boat Castle. So I cover the head of my bishop. Oh dear. So in a previous game, it was pointed out to me that this rook can move up and start protecting these points. Um, so I should not do anything overly aggressive this early in the game. Uh, it would be a mistake to misplace my silver. But now the rook can no longer come across to defend these points. So now, if I want to do something crazy, what can I do? Um, like, so I'm wanting to attack both directions. I'm going to boost the volume a little bit because this seems a bit quiet. Or at least I'm having slight challenges hearing it. So I've not decided if this is the target, this is the target, or this is the target. Or maybe all three are the target here. Um, usually I would want to defend the head of my bishop, but I think there are other ways I can manage to defend stuff. Um, like, I could bring this gold up twice, even though that's really unusual. But also, this could be a weakness, and maybe, if bishops exchange, I could maybe profit. Alright, so this vanguard pawn, good for them for taking the vanguard pawn, but it does block their bishop. Hmm. So Vanguard Pawn is strong if it is easily defended. Otherwise, if I could get a general in front to strike at it, um, it would become a weakness. Um, what I'm challenged with is that if I move my silver forward, they can pincer um, and try to collect it. Hmm. I'm not sure how gutsy I'm feeling. 
No, I think this is fine. Um, so my justification is that my silver can move up again. And they could try to exchange pieces, but they don't they can't place a pawn back far enough to chase it. So um yeah, this is awkward, but I think it's okay. I think um, I might open this diagonal at some point. So this is only dangerous if they can completely surround the Silver General. Um... Hmm. I think I'm fine just completing Half Mino Castle here and asking them, are they really going to uh, try to collect the silver right away? So I think it's one thing if I bring my silver up to the left, they could bring the rook over to collect it, potentially. Uh, but if it approaches the king this way, it's harder for them to chase. So they would need something... I don't know how they would pursue this. I guess the same thing applies. Um, if I'm being honest with myself. And maybe I'm not. Oh wait, no, there would be this pawn in the way. Huh. Mike can check. Okay, Mike is good. We're dropping some frames, but not too many. So the next thing that might be possible here is if I uncover my bishop. Um, then if they attack my silver, I could take 5-5, five, five, striking the rook. So they'd have to spend a tempo bringing their silver forward, which they're going to do anyway. Um, so where's my advantage here? How do I score some advantage from playing such a risky strategy? <laughs> Presuming there is some way to get an advantage, and maybe there's not. Ah, all right, there's an advantage to that, or rather the trade-off here is that this covers many squares, but it can't support this pawn advance without the pawn actually being in the way of the bishop. Um, but also at some point I might have this bishop 9-5 uh, move. Not here, but at some point I could have that. Um,
Okay, yeah, now that's a defensive move. It's a good one, but... Or at least it looks good. Um... All right, we're going to play this kind of assertive gold advance. So all my pieces defend each other. I've temporarily blocked my bishop from retreating. Um, if I advance this gold again, it's floating. As is my rook. Yeah. Um, floating is sometimes okay. But the idea is that if a bishop exchange magically transpires, okay, I could have seen this if I were looking closer and paying enough attention. Um, hmm. Yes, that makes sense. Bishop exchange is not on the menu right now. I see. Um, could I have made this more difficult for myself? Maybe. Not sure how I could have. All right, tactics don't seem to be favorable here. Um, Well, this could be playable. This is tricky. Um, hmm. Wait. Ah, oh, sunken cost fallacy. All right. Um... Sunken cost fallacy is that by continuing to throw away material, I can improve my position. I'm not sure that's accurate here. Okay, we're going to get an exciting game here, one way or another. It's 
So what am I thinking, you ask? Assuming I am thinking. I'd like to think I am. Bishop 9-5. Bishop takes stuff. Stuff somehow works out. Um, oh. Hmm. Interesting. I think this is still playable. All right, we're going to give up a silver for a knight. And this way I have an attack on 5-5. Five five. This way I have some other attacking ideas, and my bishop and rook do become active. Although my opponent has a silver. Um... 5-5 five five is difficult to defend. So my plan is to just activate my pieces and hope that that works out. I don't see any reason to panic yet. So I activated my bishop. I have two pawns and a knight for a silver. This could be a reason to panic. Um, maybe. So... If I take this, Rook takes, I drop a pawn to prevent a promotion. What happens next? But if I take Rook takes, I can do aggressive stuff. Um. Hmm. Oh, I can do aggressive stuff even if the rook doesn't take. Yeah, this might be an improved version of what happened to us yesterday. So, let's just not panic and make the best of this situation. with an emphasis on the not panic part. So again, we're down five minutes, just like yesterday. But this time, there's nothing defending this point other than the king. So if this rook moves, this becomes a massive target. The only thing they can do to defend this, again, similar to yesterday, would be put a silver somewhere near the king. 
but their plan, I assume, is to do something, I don't know, to not make the silver a target? To maybe use their rook somehow? It's not, not, I guess a silver in the center of the board is a strong piece, but I'm also threatening to promote my rook. I just need to push this twice more, get it out of the way, and then my rook promotes. Which is like four moves. Um, it's slow. And that's if I promote the rook. That's what would be involved. Okay. And that's only if we promote the rook. Um... If we don't promote the rook, we can just like put it on any other file and try to use it. Um, So my idea is that I want to see a silver drop over here, and then I could switch the rook back to the center file. Um... Hmm. Interesting. Very aggressive. All right, I have trapped my rook. But I think it's okay. Wait, no, they can just block this with a pawn. This is definitely not okay. Um, hmm. Well, no, the trade-off is that their king never escapes. But, um, I don't think that helps me that much. Um, this trade-off is not worth it. I mean, where else was the lance going to go? I don't know, but... Um... Oh, I was thinking knight drop. I missed rook takes. Alright. I'm feeling a little less dumb now for my move. But only a little bit less dumb. Still feeling pretty dumb. Right. That's stunning. They pursue my least active piece.
これより両読みに入ります。Okay, this does deal with a night drop threat. That's the other purpose of this move.、Um, For me, parting with the rook. When a dragon's about to tear into my camp is a very emotional decision. <laughs> It's difficult for me to reach that outcome.、Um, All right, you want the rook. It's yours. We'll find some way to make this work. We will negotiate on your terms.、Um, Okay, we need this in defense. I would chase the bishop, but it's just going to move anyway. So let's instead try to focus on not getting my horse trapped in the corner and see if there's some way I can concoct some attack against this king. All right, so we fork this point、um, and the dragon and the knight.
I'm not sure which of my many threats is strongest here. So I'll just make them all at the same time. Yes, this is the obvious response. But this puts you in a situation where this horse is in the corner. Um, its influence is going to be limited by whatever piece I put on 5-5. Five five. The problem is if I put a piece on 5-5, five five, it's committed. This looks strong to me. Or at least I can't find a better square for my knight. So this threatens gold 3-3. Three, three. Um, This was my plan. So I'm forking the 2 3 pawn and the dragon here. So next I can take the dragon and then take the knight, and my knight here does not get taken because they need to spend a tempo defending this. Or, alternatively, they start running, and I guess I still keep taking things. Or I don't know, maybe they don't need to spend a tempo. <sighs> I'm not sure. These four pawns in a line are risky. Because it means I have no escape. On the other hand, I could consider taking this knight instead of taking 2-3. Uh, and that way I have a knight drop and I can collect a silver and like not get mated right away. Um, So there was another point to my move. Um, unless I've missed something massive here, I get a dragon. It's possible I could have missed something massive. Thirty 
I don't think I have though. All right, I think this is okay. I think I survived both against them taking 5-5 five five and against a night drop. Because I can block with a piece here. All else e being equal, I can block. But I could probably also run. Like night drop, pawn takes this check. I, mean, I could drop a gold here if I have to. Uh, right. Um, and that's if I have to, I could. I panic. But at least this panic is a joyful one. <laughs> I'm like, wait, are you serious? There's no way. If I am checkmated, kudos to my opponent, but this does not seem possible. This does not seem even remotely possible. How could that possibly work? So my next thought is, like, silver takes knight, again, as a defensive move, like, this gold is unnecessary, but it doesn't hurt anything. Um, I mean, yeah, I'd love to checkmate faster, but... Yeah. But here... Like, it's just, there can't possibly be a mate, so, um, I mean, my opponent will do everything they can. Actually, yeah, it's kind of nice how this horse protects the silver all the way up there. Um, not that that's even necessary here. <laughs> Yeah, so my generals cover against almost every possible drop. Um, the only reason I haven't started dropping pieces on this side of the board is I don't see an effective mate. Um,
Mm, I'm panicking super hard at the moment. Um, it's still fine. I'm just making my game very difficult for myself. Right, so this is possible. But this requires the rook to defend this gold general. Um, I just need to be careful to not give them exactly the pieces. Well, no, I've already given them the gold. The gold is already starting to act against me. I need to be cautious not to give them exactly what they need to checkmate me. Um, while also being very confused on my end about how do I deliver a checkmate. Um, so... When I kept saying this is not possible, this is not possible, slowly we are seeing the gears turn and things become possible that shouldn't be ever so slowly. Um... All right, I aim for checkmate. If I get a gold general, then I can drop a rook here and use that for the checkmate. Um, so that's pretty blunt. But if it works, it works. If the king moves, we drop the rook that's mate in one. So... Yep, I think they have to take. And as they capture, I capture here. Unless I have a forced mate that's faster. Um... So an early escape of the king is worth eight moves. If somehow I can prevent the king from escaping early, that's going to make this a lot easier for me. 
So my current threat is to take the Lance and to follow with Silver Drop 3-2 mate. Another threat is Horse Takes Pawn. Um, possibly I might have other mate threats, like Silver Drop and then Rick Takes Promote. Don't know why that didn't occur to me. But yeah, this is looking like a good position for me. Oh, hang on. If they interpose here, I just take whatever ends up here. I have checkmate. I take, if king takes, um, bishop or horse takes here. If they take this, I've got mate in one. Yes, that works. All right, thanks for the game. Oh, that was intense. Uh, yeah, so... Ooh. Yeah, so this is turning to master. Um, it's recommended that, at, as time permitting, after each game we would like to review games. Um, I know it seems awkward that this might be a turning to master game because, um, oh, did I just lock the interface? I hope not. Oh goodness. I locked my interface by, all right, sorry, I need to be right back here. It's the second time I've done that this week. Um, okay, we need to reopen the browser. I zoomed in on the board, which crashed the interface. I've crashed the interface again. And task... Alright, um... Take three. Sorry about this. Reset zoom. Full screen. Yeah, so I zoomed one too many times, which just for somehow completely breaks the chat and everything else about this interface. Um, yeah, so toward the end of this game, um, so this game, because I didn't lose, I'm sympathetic to however they want to analyze it. We can analyze from the end, we can analyze from the beginning. This is turning to master. Let's see, we did capture the window, that's good. Um, yeah. At this point, my attack looks overwhelming. Uh, but despite the fact that like both of us were at the one Don floor, this is turning to master for players one to four Don. Um, we both come up uh, on a st uh, streak of misfortune or something recently. Oh, well, okay. So they could attempt to escape this way. Um, I mean, surely this, right? Uh, so I'm sympathetic to however they wish to analyze it or review it. Um, yeah, had I lost the game, I would kind of insist on doing it from the beginning, but uh, if they're excited about the end, we can look at the end first. 
Because um, hmm. I am somewhat curious. Like, do I have a checkmate even after they try this early escape? I'm not sure that it's as bothersome as he's claiming. Um, it might be. But I don't think that there's a successful escape. Um, just seems super unlikely to me that this king escapes somehow. Um, I could be missing something, but... It just doesn't look right. Oh, well, okay, yeah, that looks like the most straightforward response. Yeah. I was trying to finesse things, but this is actually... It looks crushing. Um... Hmm. I do wonder. I uh, wonder how this could work. Um, yeah, let's just keep taking stuff. I'm not sure that this is so bothersome, because we just keep taking all the pieces and checkmate with what's left. I mean, as long as uh, Gota doesn't get a check anywhere in the sequence, uh, we can sacrifice whatever we want. Uh, material no longer matters, as long as we can just keep approaching the king. Um, actually, though, hang on. Can we just take this? This looks pretty simple, right? I don't really foresee this king escaping. Um, so my idea taking here is that eventually there will be a knight drop. Right, silver drop here, and like, yeah, it's crushing. And you'll note that, like, this used to be defending that. So we've moved the rook away. So even that can't participate in defense anymore. Or attack. Um, it's this pawn drop over here. was subtle, but seems extremely effective in hindsight. Um, yeah, I guess we'll start from the beginning then. Um... As exciting as the end sequence was, yeah, I suppose there's a lot more to review. Um, I, again, got excited about bringing my silver out. I'm still not apologetic for this, because, like, it works, right? So, we did see in Shogi Harbor's lecture, um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, this does seem like what she was suggesting. I'm just not sure in this context. <laughs> like, where you pushed all these pawns. It, I still have a hard time believing that, like, this rook advance is always so effective. I got a good initiative for what happened here. Um, yeah. Well... I saw that you moved uh, many pawns, uh, so I assumed I had time for this. Um, yeah, no, so if you do like this here, yeah, no, I think this, um, 
Move order looks uh, correct. Um, because if you try some other move order, I'm not sure that other move orders quite work out. Um, so, I was going to do something like this anyway. Um, So we've given up a bishop to get this position, but I think it's okay. Hmm. Maybe I'm just crazy. But, like, I see my pieces becoming active soon. But yeah, maybe this move order is better. Hmm. I'm not sure. I'm honestly trying to think about this. I'm just confused. Mm. Yeah, so these are things I could try here. Um, but this is what I was targeting the whole time. So I'm just playing, like, insane aggressive shogi, which perhaps is not called for, but it looks interesting. Um, and I guess at this point, yeah, I have to support my silver some other way. So we could call this a material loss for me, but I get an initiative, so I think it's maybe okay. I think I've at least made this complicated. Uh, although I've given away a lot of material to do this. I'm still, I guess, delusional, or I don't know what. Um... But yeah, we've got uh, a silver that's able to attack over here. We've got some control over a lot of squares. They have a bishop and a silver. Um, so as soon as like I slip up, I'm in trouble. But... Um, hmm... So yeah, this counterattack aimed at trying to collect the rook um, is a bit too aggressive then. Um, all right, so what can I do about this, I wonder? Um, so I had foreseen I could try something like this, too. If either piece hits my silver... Uh, oh, wait. Wait a second. Um, this is not so obvious, is it? Um, hmm. Yeah, I don't know. I've been thinking about this. Yeah, so they get pressure on this file. I have no pawn in hand. Um... Hmm. Why did I think this is okay? Other than just some desire to preserve myself. 
Um, like everybody has a self-preservation instinct, which tells us that things we do in some sense have to be okay. Yeah, this looks uh, maybe doable. Um, right. So they could collect my silver, um, but it's kind of a mess. Hmm. Yeah. So, yeah, if I'm going to advance my silver, I can't, like, build half Mino and also advance this. It's pick one or the other. And in this situation, yeah. Um, I got lucky. I guess. Um, yeah, this pawn move surprised me. I mean, it does stop me from moving the bishop to the edge, but... Uh, yeah, so something more like this... Um, well, so here the problem is that I can collect the knight, so now I've got two knights for a silver, which might still be fine, but um, yeah, it's not super clear to me what this is, this knight achieves here. It could break my castle shape if I had a good shape. But my shape is a uh, half me, you know, it's okay. Oh. Oh, wow. Have I missed something? Um. Hmm. Right, so this is what I was intending the entire time. Oh, and this time I... Well, yeah, we take this now. Um. And pray that we have some attack. <laughs> uh, surely we do. We must have an attack here, but... Um, yeah, pray that we have an attack. Uh, there's got to be something. So many pieces attacking. What could I do? I'm not sure. It seems unlikely that this boat survives against whatever it is that I might be able to play next, but I don't know. Um, so, I don't know. Something like this, maybe. Like, I want to hit this bishop before it becomes safe, or before it strikes my lance. So, I think this is the right moment for me to try to kick this bishop off the diagonal. Yeah. Yeah. Two knights are so strong. So I don't know where the one general he is is that he's counting, but um, surely I'm probably doing awesome here somehow.
Yeah. Yeah, that's interesting. Um, raises the question, what if the bishop keeps climbing forward? But that might be easily answered somehow. Um, Well, okay, let's see his idea, though. So this was what he's thinking, but well, how do you continue? It looks scary at first. Okay, so we take this. Um, yeah, gold takes, because I feel like tempting fate today. It seems appropriate. Um, yeah, that looks right. It's not clear how attack continues here. Um, maybe something like this. with the idea of striking here next. Something like this might be appropriate and might strike faster than this bishop can do any kind of real harm. I keep focusing on trying to drive an attack quickly and maybe this is breaking my ability to deliver an effective attack. I wonder. Could be. Um, so then we play something like this, right? So we chuck we chuck this move in. Our threatening rook takes gold. Um, I get that there's a silver right there, but we're gonna find some way to do something about that next. And just pile up all the threats and let them all execute at once, somehow. I don't know. But yeah, I guess maybe this works. Maybe there was a better way to do all of this too. So as much as I was looking at, um, yeah, this pawn drop might actually not be necessary or useful, but it looks useful if I were to have to use a silver here or a knight here, but, um, yeah. Yeah, it looks hard to defend. Um, but also this raises a question about, like, did I really need to do the pawn drop here? Maybe I just do that. Yeah. Um, so if this is so successful... Yeah. Wow. Two knights versus whichever general he's counting. Yeah. That looks pretty convincing. Um, so yeah, maybe by switching up the move order he had far better fate in the opening. If my silver doesn't drift over to the left side of the board and start causing trouble. Um, it's possible he is far better off. Which means I need to find some solution to whatever his opening attacking idea was. One solution would be uh, opening my diagonal exchanging bishops under better circumstances. Then, And maybe I don't have time to like tuck my king all the way into the corner and build half Mino before doing that. Because boat is very quickly built. 
and half Mino is not quickly built. Um, yeah, I'm not sure. Um, but somehow I did manage to get both of these pawns on the fifth rank, and it only cost me a silver for a night. So, uh, he planned to drop silver, 7-6. Ah! Uh... I had planned uh, both bishop to 9-5 and bishop 5-5. Five five. So, like, yeah, this was my contingency plan if bishop 9-5 didn't work. And if bishop 5-5 five five didn't work, I was going to play bishop 9-5 instead and sack it for the silver if I had to. Um, I might not have had to. So because my gold general is loose, I can't do any tricky tempo gaining moves. Oh. Oh, this is interesting. Um hmm. Yeah, maybe I had a pawn drop on the eighth file. I wonder. I could have made things interesting there, perhaps. Not that I can even drop a pawn here, but like they're trying to protect the square. Just their point. Yeah. So, yeah, they have to allow me to take their gold general. Um, and then I just sacrifice anyway. Oops. <laughs> uh, so I probably missed, uh, prior... Probably could have done, uh, pawn drop 8-5 earlier. Um, so, yeah, here instead of this, like, goodness, that needs to occur to me. <laughs> um, that way I have access to this square, and I can start a massive fight right away. That is kind of embarrassing how I missed that. Uh, two Tornado Master games in a row. Um, hmm. Alright. Well, the good news is we did manage to get an attack. Um, somehow. So, I couldn't find a way to defend their position here. There might be a defense. I just couldn't find it. Because I was in time pressure. There also might not be a defense here. Like, my attack might be overwhelming. Um, I admit I am confused. Um, but yeah, seems like burying the lance into the corner could be risky, uh, because of what happened in the game. But I don't know what you do. Um, oh right, so yeah, there's the king, uh, dragon fork. Hmm. 
so I guess maybe I wonder if there's some way to cover all these squares that the fork could happen through. Um probably not. Yeah, so I do this to shut down their horse. And I was just gambling at this point that like somehow somehow my attack might be more convincing than their ability to defend. Um Yes, I saw this. Um Right, and I saw that, and I was trying to read this out in Bioyomi. I couldn't quite read it, but it this looked promising. Because their attack against me is a bit slower. Oh, that's what I was planning. That's right. So, yeah, I forgot. Um, See, so yeah, actually, this is quite strong. Uh, so, okay. Supposing they did this, just lining up all the pieces. Um, how do we continue? Hmm. Taking that, that seems a bit unsatisfying. I'm not sure about this. You would imagine, like, that's got to be the natural impulse here, but it doesn't look right. Um, maybe something like this instead. Just trying to land another foothold next to the king. It doesn't quite look right either, though. Um, I wonder, could this be it? So this is threatening to take here. Or maybe there's some other way. No, actually, this looks reasonable. Hmm. So if my attack is actually faster here, I mean, like, what's the alternative? I don't know. Um, I wonder, perhaps there's time for a move like this. And then after we do that, we take here. And if I take here, maybe there's time for this? I'm not sure. Oh. Is there something more direct? I'm not sure about that one. Um. Oh, wait, wait. Oops. Um. Hmm. Uh, 
Okay, so how do we defend this? <laughs> it's such a cluster, isn't it? Such a cluster. Um... Hmm. But also there might be some running moves somewhere in the middle of all this. <laughs> I have no idea. Engines could solve this. I might have difficulty figuring it out. Um, yeah. I don't know where to go next with that. It'd be one thing if I could just, like, take the silver, move it sideways, and snap the lance. Sure. Um, so, yeah, at this point... Um, yeah, King... Yeah. Yeah. The King 4 1 looks reasonable. Um, I'm not sure that there's anything better to do than just start running. Um, I mean, maybe you have a rook drop. Uh, It's like maybe you have this and like that, but it's hard to know for sure. Um, hmm. Yeah, I think we just... Right. No, you're absolutely right. So, I... Seem to survive against this. Um, let's see. Oh, well, wait. So we're going to take this dragon. And now we got a rook. I mean, surely I survived this, right? This looks like um, I've got lots of chances, um, so yeah, that sacrifice has to be well timed if it's done. Um, yeah, maybe this here. I'm not sure. Uh, and then it's anybody's guess what's going on. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah. Let's run, run, run. As fast as you can. Can't catch me on the gingerbread, man. But, um, so... It was this sort of thing I had in mind when I dropped Knight 5-5, five five, preventing other pieces from showing up on 4-4, four 5-5, four, five five, etc. Um, okay. That takes a rook. Um, I guess we capture this. Oh! Oh my! Uh, okay, that's kind of sudden. Yeah, I guess with that in mind, oh. Uh. Yeah, my attack is very severe here. So there isn't even time for that rook drop. Wow. 
Um, that's an issue. I figured, uh, yeah, in time pressure, I played it because it looked very aggressive, but it's actually quite severe. Okay. Um, okay, yeah, that kind of changes the character of this position. Right. Okay, so that's how we get into this, and yeah, they have to defend. Um, uh, here I didn't find a mate. Uh, So, I played uh, this slow move. Since my position is quite strong already, I just decide, you know what, let's not get checkmated today. But, maybe somehow there's something I could have done. I don't know. Um... I mean, for one thing, I could have maybe taken the knight instead. But there's just a lot to read. And, yeah. So I thought... I was pretty certain I survived this. Okay, they have another knight lined up here. That makes some sense. So I can just exchange... Uh, pieces to pick up all of their knights. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, this covers that square. Um, so that's more or less why I played this very slow move. Just trying to calm down the position so I could have time to get my other pieces. Make some use out of them. I don't know. Usually a gold at the head of the castle is kind of a weak spot, but or a weakness. But here their king is like... <laughs> uh, yeah. It's hard to remember everything. Um... But at this point, like, I've completely um, protected my king. And their attack made some sense, their fork, but I wonder if there's some other way they could have tried some of this. I don't know. Because, like, that exchange just gives my king a little bit more room, uh, room to run. Obviously, they don't want to give up the horse, but... They don't really have a choice. Um, yeah, I'm surprised you took this. Um, I had kind of expected that either they would take my horse, I would take their rook, or they'd move the rook somewhere and I would come up with another plan. Um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, looks like your last chance to attack uh, my king. So... 
Gotta try something. Um... I guess they panicked too because I was attacking their king. Um... Yes, yeah, so do I have a checkmate? Wouldn't it be nice if I did have a checkmate? Um, hmm, what to do? Yeah, I guess this actually helps their king escape a bit, doesn't it? If I play that way. Um... Hmm. I mean, maybe I'm still fine here. So trying to promote a bishop over here, trying to attack something over there. It's, I don't know how to play. But I know I need to attack before my king gets mated. Um, and I know I don't really want to give up this pawn on... Four six for nothing. So I want at least a tempo for that pawn. Preferably something better, but at least a tempo. So I've still got ideas like this and this. I don't know. Um... But yeah, I don't see a direct attack that prevails just yet. But I've got stuff like this too. Um, Right, that is check. Uh, yeah, check does break up my castle. Um, that's unfortunate. On the other hand, this gives me some pieces to work with. just means that my castle is super broken, so... Um, well, if I break it, I might, I might be able to use my king next, and instead of separating my gold and silver. Um, oh, well, that's interesting, too. So, other threats this raises, well, no, I don't have a mate here. I have many strong attacking moves, but I don't have a forced mate. Um, so yeah, I can actually get away with a move like this. And then if they pursue, I can run either back toward the corner or toward the center. But the center is dangerous because this bolt is loose. 
Um, So what I'm trying to plot next is some way to like get a knight up here. And if it's taken, magically have a checkmate somewhere. Um, it's a bit idealistic, but wouldn't that be nice? I've probably missed some other ideas. Oh. Um, <laughs> well, it's curious, given the balance of material that I have. Um, yeah, I'm not sure that I had any direct mate. Um, so they still have a bishop. And because they have a bishop, I'm slightly paranoid about what's going on, but I think I'm safe this way. This gold at the head of a pawn means the pawn's not going to move for at least one turn. But yeah, it looks like it'll take some... A couple moves for me to get an attack going. Um, but on the bright side, if I can get an attack going, hopefully it works. Hopefully it mates. Um, Sadly, I cannot Nifu, so because I have so many pawns on so many different files, it's difficult for me to place a pawn to start an attack. Um, So I still only have one silver in hand. Okay, so I wonder. Um, do I have a direct mate? Do I have a direct mate? So I'm considering knight 4 4, but it doesn't seem to cut it. it. Doesn't seem to quite work out. Yeah, this seems better than knight 4 4. Um. Oh, so for one thing, yeah, pawn drop is illegal.
Right, so you have to... Oh. Wait, why would I take... Well, okay. Um... Yeah, out of self-preservation, I could take that. Um... Though, I wonder, like... Now that I'm looking at this... Oh. Um... Hmm. Do I not have a mate here? Where the hell is my mate? It definitely feels like there should be a mate in this position. Something's... Something is off if I don't... But I don't know what. Um... Yeah, I guess we take here, sure. Um, I guess that's fine. Yeah, actually, this seems much more direct. Um, although, I don't think a lance drop is correct here. I think you have to drop a pawn... Oh wait, but then we still have this. Uh, I thought pawn drop is better. It's not. So either way, um, either way, we get this situation. Now, if pawn drop, then they have a lance drop, bishop drop, bishop takes, lance drop, pawn promote. It's still, they don't have anything they can do here. So I've managed to spook myself, but haven't gotten anything for it. The upshot of all of this is that somewhere way earlier in the combination, I missed a some easier way to about all of this. But yeah, at this point, the lance drop is crushing. Um, right. So there must have been an easier way, but this works. Uh, yep. Yeah, that's checkmate. And while there's probably side variations all over the place, it, it, the key point is that one attack is much faster than the other. Or, I'm sorry, one attack is one move faster than the other. Um, although probably if I play it right, it's two or three moves faster, but I'm just not playing it right. Um, yeah. Yeah, until the castle got overrun, that was really nice. And then I found some ways to, like, completely overrun it. Which is... I was impressed I found some good moves. Um, I actually played a nice attack there at the end. Uh, uh, so, yeah. 
Wow. All right, well, that's round two of Tourney to Master. Um, thanks. Yeah. Yeah, that was one hell of an encounter. Um, so we were trying to commentate this, uh, and we did. Do I have any additional points to add? So I had mentioned here, like, this gold drop was slow. Um, I'm actually curious, now that I have the luxury of having all the time in the world to think about this position, like, what do I do? Is there a right way to play this? I mean, the gold drop looks fine. There's nothing wrong with it. Um... My whole point was that I wanted to pick up this horse. And my opponent did gift it to me, which was kind. Um, although maybe they're forced to. They didn't have to give up this knight. Um, but yeah, like it's not clear where the horse runs to at this time. A gold is a very nice piece to checkmate with. I just could not find a mate. Um, so that's why I did what I did. But now that we have time, like, can I find something, maybe? I don't think I can. Oh, well, hang on, we got this. So, one thought that occurred to me is, like, something like this could happen. And they might take back, right? Um, but then we have moves like this drop. They could block. Oh, I can't, I can't forcibly take this square. So, like, when I'm looking at this here, I mean, yes, if they capture, I have the same... Actually, I don't have mates. It looks crushing, but it's not. Um, that's interesting. Because this time they have the horse defending the castle. Uh, right. And I don't have a piece in hand. So I can't just throw this gold into the ocean. Um, okay. That's interesting. So yeah, I mean, I could exchange my silver for horses and get into something like this and then realize that I need a plan. Um... I mean, I could continue pretending like I don't, and probably come up with something halfway reasonable, but um, plans are good to have. Their horse covers this and attacks here. So this gold drop felt really heavy. It felt like they could walk around it somehow to conduct an attack if they could find some way to do that. But... Maybe my feeling was wrong. Because I am attacking this horse. I am attacking this gold. They need to make decisions here. And the decision they made in the game... I'm not sure it made any sense there, but... Huh. Maybe my position's better than I thought. But also, if I back up a bit... Yeah, this knight 5-5 five, five drop. I'm not sure about this. I'm really not. Because this gives them time to strike with something like that. And, okay, I can take this knight. Fine. Uh, possibly if they're going to do that, they do this first. And uh, then they strike with something like this. And so then they have this nice little battery. Um... I'm not sure that I have mate here. So... Yeah, this 5-5 five, five knight drop perhaps is not right, but in time pressure I couldn't find a good move. I mean, this is possible, but I really didn't want to do it because it's cowardly. 
but maybe that's appropriate here. Um, hmm. Something just doesn't feel quite right about this position. I'm not sure what. Did I miss something, like, before this? When I did the silver drop, was this silver drop just not very well motivated? I mean, the goal was to hit this point, and it was quite effective at that. Um, was this a moment where I should have done that? Just hauled off and said, you know, I'm going to take this next, if you don't do something. I was expecting something like this, and I don't know if it's worth taking the dragon. Um, oh. Okay. I'm seeing things now. Um, so, they defend many points around their king. Um... Oh, I'm sorry. Also, one thing I wanted to consider. What about this? If I just, like, haul off and say, you know, forget all this. I'm gonna mate you right here, right now. Um, how does that turn out? I don't have very many pieces to support a mate. In fact, I have only a knight and a gold. Yeah, this doesn't turn out well. I can't just do that. What about something like this? That ditto, this doesn't look smart. Um, but yeah, this knight 5-5, five five, maybe that is best. They played silver over. I forgot to mention to them this idea. Uh, I suppose they saw some reason that this wasn't worth it. But what? Um, yeah, what this comes down to, I guess, here is, should I have played this, hitting the dragon right away, or should I play the knight 5-5 five five drop? Um, it comes down to whether or not this is effective. Well, if we transpose through knight, like, here would I play this move? No. <laughs> so why did I play this first? The only reason I would play knight 5-5 five five first is if somehow I be believed I had an attack here. Um, so, like, this has to be what I was thinking. But how in the world does this work? I was thinking about this. I was thinking about that. Um, but I'm not sure that, like, this knight 5-5 five five might be too heavy. Plus, there is pawn drop 5-4. Yeah, I'm not sure. Protecting the knight with a pawn is not a good use of time. So, so if there's some logical continuation to continue piling on here, it's got to be this gold drop. But a gold drop looks really heavy. So we got one, two, three. If we just summon two more here, it'll be Captain Planet. Um, but yeah, maybe I believed in this, which is a bit crazy. Well, no, they have two defending it. They need to bring a third defender. Um, so they bring a third defender. What am I doing? Knight takes, knight takes, silver takes, gold takes, gold takes, king takes. Yeah, this does not work. This knight 5-5, five five, scary as it looks, it's just not right. I have to do this. Which says, I'm gonna take your dragon. And they say, okay, go take my dragon. And then we take it. And they recapture. And what I didn't like about this is that they're hitting the silver. So unless I could find, like, 
a way to fork with profit, and maybe I can. Um, if I can't find a way to attack with profit here, um, our silver gets trapped, <laughs> and we repeat our experience from earlier this game of getting a silver trapped. Oh, that's funny. This is the game where I get all my silver generals trapped. Um, hmm. Wow, that's sad and funny. I'm not sure which it's more of, if it's more sad or more funny, but yeah, because I don't have a silver to like drop back here, I can't silver drop, take the gold, and then like fork to win this horse. Uh, so to stop this, I would need to interpose or protect this some other way. Or just take the knight and say, okay, my attack has ended. I don't like patient moves. But maybe I need to learn to play them more often. Because I can't, if I attack all the time, am I going to be successful all the time? No. So, the only way to make some use of my gold is to block this diagonal. Actually, that might be the right thing. Yeah. Whether I block here or somewhere else. Hmm. That might be right. Interesting. I also wonder earlier in this game, where am I talking about now? So my rook's trap. Oh yeah, this lance drop on 5-6 is slow. Um, yeah, I feel like I must have missed quite a few ideas this game. I played so many slow moves. When does this game accelerate to the point where I can't slow it down anymore? So when I take 5-5, five, five, this announces our transition. When I take here, there's no going back. Do I have anything I can do other than um, causing havoc here? I mean, yeah, if I'm happy with my position, I don't have to resort to such... Okay, and yeah, this read goes back to my opponent's point about move order. Um... But yeah, what is the silver move? The silver move is just completely ignoring what's going on. I don't have time for that. Ain't nobody got time for that. Um, shoot. So, yeah, at this point, they're threatening one and two. And if I pay, like, no attention, one and two will happen. So, I need to fight somehow. Okay. Yeah. Um, so their point about like trapping the rook when I play a move like this makes sense. And yeah, I played my king over. And while that's sensible in general, what am I really doing? Now, if I'm going to play the king over, I can't do this. I just need to, like, play Half Mino Castle and not be terrified about my bishop being attacked. Because it's going to be okay. Everything's going to be alright. So, yeah, they get to attack the head of my bishop. This is normal. Um, this always causes me to panic. So what do I do about that? If this causes me to panic every time, is there anything else I could do? Oh, at this point, now that my silver protects this, I don't need to panic. I can just step back one. 
uh, Shogi Harbor has pointed this out to me a couple times, um, that I can protect the head here. Um, okay, and yeah, they could try to exploit this, or they could also try to bring this forward. Um, and here they can actually do this, um, and this does break in. So, yeah, before, so when they do something like this, I need to do that. They can return the favor. Wait a second, wait a second. Now, if my bishop dropped back, um, yeah, they can't do this because I have this cover. Um, so, yeah, now they control this diagonal. And I need to just not panic. <laughs> I recognize that this is normal, that they control this diagonal, and I get to do other stuff. But, yeah, this is their diagonal. Um, somehow that's just a really hard concept for me. And it shouldn't be. Alright, I'll have to study some more games like this to figure out, like, obviously bringing up the silver gets me in massive trouble, so I can't do that. I need, to, even though it seems to be winning a lot, I cannot play that way if I want to win this Tourney to Master tournament. So I need to find other ideas, um, and I need to read accurately and so forth during games, but, um, yeah. Uh, also, this is not how they play that, but anyway. So, there's just stuff to consider. Um, yeah, I drop back, they can try to contest this file. And this takes the pressure off of this file here. So. I'll have to study this more. I don't know why I'm forgetting it. But, um, yeah, it's... This is certainly playable for me. What was it about this position? It was the combination of these two pawns both moving. Also this pawn moving. That just somehow triggered me. And I just need to stop like getting so excited when all these odd file pawns move. Even though I'm playing Santa, even though like yeah, I have the privilege of declaring my attack first. Um, that doesn't mean I have to attack first. So they've already selected a castle. And, like, they've built up a really decent castle here. They're not... They haven't moved this silver out. So... Like, this is super flexible, but also extremely slow on their part. Um, and I'm just filled with this desire to, like, show and demonstrate that my position's better. And that's just not how it works in this game. Um, I mean, let's say I try this, right? And say they take here and say I do that. Um, so they just protect here, and we exchange, and I don't know. So I do this with an intent of promoting back here. Um, they can stop said promotion. I go back this way. Like, okay. I'm demonstrating I'm kind of macho or something, but they can do stuff too. This is a game of give and take. And if I'm trying to just take and never give, this is just not going to work. Um, so, yeah, I need to like accept the fact that if my opponent wants to attack, it's okay for me to defend for a bit. But also, like, except that, you know, there are formations where if I really wanted to attack, unless they do this sort of thing directly, I have opportunities. So, like, okay, it's one thing if I close the diagonal. 
Uh, I just spaced out today, like thinking, what if we do this? Um, this looks playable, right? Um, but then I thought, wasn't there something about this Rook Pawn having had to have moved for this to be okay? Like, somehow I thought this is not right. I don't know. I should study more and guess less, and I'll be happier for it. I keep saying this, but um, as I continue to participate in these tournaments, like, I've not yet met opponents. I mean, I meet opponents who do sometimes get me in a very difficult, compromising position, but I've not yet even against some very strong opposition, I've not met anybody who just... No, there is one player, one opponent I've met who... Uh, no, two opponents I've played who have just crushed me when I have um, played inaccurately. But that's not the composition of this tournament. So I'm not getting crushed in the opening for my opening faux pas, so I need to correct my errors myself and not make that my opponent's responsibility. I mean, it's fine enough for me to do that. It's fine for me to do this. Um, but at some point, like, this is the key. And I run understand that this is coming. Um, and I just need to not panic when I see that and deal with it appropriately and come up with a counter attack even though usually i get crushed on the eighth or seventh file usually i get some kind of counterplay somewhere i don't need to bring my silver into space and confuse my opponent it, uh, even though like frequently i do get this nice attack here it's just not something i should bank on because as my opponent pointed out had they just played slightly differently here, I would have been in trouble. Um, so yeah, had they instead of... Um, yeah, instead of this knight move, had they just played this up, and then played the knight move, uh, there was no escape. And I would reasoned, well, I'll just protect my silver, but I'm not happy with this position. Yeah, in the post-game analysis. During the game, I could be satisfied that, okay, you're right, I missed this, okay, well played. But I need a strategy for next time, which doesn't involve walking straight into this. Uh, so, yeah, that's... I'll figure something out. I uh, hope we all enjoyed this and the post-game analysis that was enlightening. Um... So where do I think the turnabout happened, other than them accepting this knight 5-5 five five drop and not stopping my attack there? Um, yeah, so I played this combination of drops, which I wasn't too happy with. I, yeah, I did remark during post-game and during the game itself that I thought they had to defend this point. Um... Am I certain about this? I'm not sure. Like, I thought this was starting to get critical, but I'm not actually sure if they had to defend. Um, this In post-game analysis, it's not something we could figure out. But... Um, I thought I had lots of chances here. But I also don't like my lance drop at all. Um, oh, hang on, hang on, there's a lot going on in this position, um, right, so this pawn takes pawn announces a transition, they didn't actually need to do that, because that just activates my rook, um, 
So they could have played... I don't know what. I mean, yes, I am threatening horse 5-5. Five five. Um, or even if they do play this... Hmm. Like, what about something like this? Or, okay, yes, I have some attack, but my knight and lance don't look like the right pieces. I don't know. Something's not quite right here. Oh, this pawn move. This is slow. Okay, yes. Sorry. I was just so startled that this game turned out so well after such a interesting opening attempt. Um, yeah, I think during post-game analysis we started looking at stuff like this. Um, during the game, I was considering what about something like that. And it's not clear how I activate my pieces here. I want to activate my pieces, it's just I don't see how I can achieve that. I can do something like this. And sure, I could do that, they could move away, but, like, I was thinking about this, trying to surround their rook, um, and the idea being if they take here, then I have a pawn drop on the rook's head, and that all looks well and good, but, um, usually here there's something that ruins my day. Oh yeah. How about this guy? <laughs> ah, perfect timing. Um, yeah. So, something like that might be playable. Oh, wait. Wait. If that's so crushing, why not just play it first? Oh. I mean, okay, this time they don't get to promote their rook. What was the game move? This pawn move. Also, if... Hmm. Yeah, no, this looks right. And then they promote. So... Hmm. Well, no, this bishop on 5-5 five is kind of a problem. I'm trying to avoid having to do this, because this is slow. This would admit that my plan has actually worked. Um, so if they can find some way to attack without doing that, then they're fine. Hmm. Am I being crazy here? I don't know. Yes, yeah, so... What if they change this move order about, like they were suggesting? So, this first. Threatening to win the silver and cut off its escape. Um, I think this, yeah, this is the critical variation. This is, I was so surprised that my attack was as successful as it was during the game. Here I wanted to do something like this. Um, but I think this... I don't know. Yeah, that's not right. We don't block the bishop twice. And if we attack here... That hits with tempo. 
At some point I need to break down and just put this into an engine, because I'm not figuring it out. There's some mystery here about, like, it feels wrong, but I don't know why. And if we put some move like he this into the position, probably it'd become more obvious why. Um, actually, is that it? Yeah, instead of bringing this rook up, which would be the obvious move, what about this? Um, I mean, there's still time for that. No, that's not right. Yeah, this gold move, again, like I'm playing slow stuff. Just letting them encapsulate my entire position. Um, yeah, I guess the reason this misfired for them is they just opted for the worst possible timing. Blocking this bishop was not good. And if they'd just been happy with their position, um, they're actually doing pretty awesome here. And then they, at their leisure, could play something like this. Um, and my bishop cannot line up with my silver unless bishops get exchanged. Hmm. The only reason I wanted to try to open this seventh file is because that could help this rook if the rook were on this file. But it's not there. <sighs> Something... I'm just very confused. They correctly surround this. <laughs> I'm trying to figure out how do we get the silver to be like on all these squares at the same time. And silver can only be on one square at a time. And this knight is usually effective when we can break this file open. The knight can help there, but it's not there. Yeah, I don't know. I guess I'll have to leave this to the viewer and or some engine to help us figure out what is going on. Because, like, during the game I felt that this position was super not great for them. Even though they have built Boat Castle. Um, even though that is a thing. It just feels like they've wavered between every possible plan. So I thought this would be an opportunity for me to make the position confusing. And while I have made the position confusing, I did not really benefit much from that. So, yeah, perhaps I should consider something simple like this. And if they play this, I can do that. We've seen this before, in fact. I just could not remember the evaluation. Um, so if we do something like this, and if I take back with a gold general, I was afraid of this, and I go, I could actually go here. This is the evaluation I was trying to remember. So, thanks to this gold moving up, I can actually play this here. And now they have to close the diagonal. And we can play on my terms. Um, I'm not sure what my terms are, but whatever they are, we can play using those instead of whatever terms they came up with. Um, but, yeah, that's the idea. Um, 
instead of this advance. No, wait, I have this backwards. It's if they push these pawns and left this one up and bring this forward, then we play this instead. I'm getting all mixed up trying to figure out how to stop my opponent's ideas. Yeah, I'll study this. Sorry for confusing myself. Sorry for confusing all of us, although we got some interesting games along the way because of it. Um, but I was extremely lucky. Yeah, like here, this pawn advance on the edge is far too slow. If they just play something sensible, I am crushed. So, yeah, I need to play better. <laughs> um... Yeah, so if they just unblock their bishop, their position's fine. Nothing to panic about here. I've blocked my rook. Yeah, I've blocked my bishop. Uh, so once they defend this 5-5 point, even if I try something, like I have to deal with their threats too. So I don't have time for something aggressive picking off their knight. I have to like defend this point. Um, but having done such a defense, um, feels like they should have a win here. Feels like something's not right. I can considering this and considering that. Considering this, like, everything is loose. But they had to protect 5 5 first before trying any of this aggressive stuff. And they just didn't. And so I had chances, and thankfully I made the better of it. But yeah, uh, the spawn advance on the edge is too slow. And even though my bishop moving away did allow them to promote, um, yeah, I disagree with them about this move. Uh, maybe up to this point they might be okay. Maybe. Um, but, yeah, here they need to do something more aggressive somehow. Um, I don't know how. Because, like, if they try moving the token away, I can block file. So, like, this is tempting, but, yeah. Anyway, they had to defend this point. They didn't. I built up an attack, and in time pressure, I prevailed. So, let's celebrate the good side of this and enjoy this game while still admitting that even though we're one done, even though we got the basics down, we got some things to learn. That's for sure. Um, yeah. That was cool, though, at the end. I found this check this like we're able to sacrifice material and pursue an attack there might be there's almost certainly a more accurate defense than what we observed in the game because i just took this and the idea is now that they don't have this horse protecting uh i just have mate um so that was kind of fun but yeah i'm sure there's more accurate play throughout the game. <laughs> We're still one done. We can, but yeah, if we want to improve, um, then we've got a lot to learn. So hope you enjoyed. Thanks for watching. See you next time.